Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Mohamed Osman and today I'm going to be giving you some tips about system design interview. Let's start with some introduction about system design interview. If you're interviewing for one of the big tech companies, then it's highly likely that you will have one of these interviews. One exception to that, if you are a fresh grad, where you're not expected to have a lot of experience just yet. One other thing that is really important to know here is that system design interview is the interview that is designed and used to level you. So you go to that interview and you do very well and you would be leveled at the very top end of the expectation. And if you go there and it's just like, don't do anything and there's a chance that you're not even hired or you would be leveled at the bottom part of the expected range. So let's start by some tips. Tip number one, prepare a lot. I understand that some of you might have 10 or even 15 years of experience and you've designed maybe tens if not hundreds of systems, but it's really important to get other opinions. So my suggestion is to go to YouTube, type in system design interview and watch as many videos as possible. Understand, for example, how Facebook works, how WhatsApp works, how Twitter, how Amazon's S3 works. So tip number one is to prepare a lot. Tip number two. This tip is for when you're in the interview. The interviewer will ask you to design one system. For example, if you're interviewing at uh, Facebook, the interviewer might ask you to design a simplified version of Facebook feed. Don't start and jump into the design right away unless you stop first, ask about the requirements, which kind of features would you, would you like to have there, and so on and so forth. So, as an example to that, I would start asking the interviewer, what kind of posts would I have in this feed? Is it gonna be just text post? Or is it gonna be also media rich? For example, if he says media rich. Okay, let's move to the next point. What kind of interactions can the user do on these posts? Would he be able to like, comment, report, for example, and get the requirements and then move to the next step? What is the expected audience, for example, of my, my feed or my service? And so on and so forth. So start by gathering the requirements, write them down, and you will know that later. You'll know why later. So ask a lot of questions at the beginning, write down the requirements one by one, and then start your system design. Tip number three, start always with a very high level design. So for example, if you're designing a service that would be composed of two parts, one part which is gonna be the back end and another part which is gonna be consumed by a front end or mobile client, then always start with very top level. Like for example, if I'm designing a back, the back end part, I would say I would have here our back end service. It would start with a simple gateway Within or behind this gateway, you will have load balancers that will be forwarding the request to the least loaded, let's say, server. And then I go further and further and further. For example, the next layer, I would have um, security validation for the request. The next layer, I would have, let's say, consumption of this request and saving of messages. And the next layer and so on. So start with like very top layers, maybe even write them on uh, different parts of the board so you would have enough space to get into details of each part of them. So start with high level and don't jump into a lot of details. Tip number four. As you progress through the system design, make sure that you don't just design completely isolate parts. Like make sure that you fully understand and you make it very clear how data will reach to this point. So for example, don't just mention that there would be a queue and there will be workers and we'll have a database, but rather say that the request will arrive at this service, this service will consume that request and save a record in database and dispatch an image, uh, a message to that queue. And then this queue will be consumed by other workers and each of these workers will consume this message and dispatch it again to something else and so on and so forth. Just make sure that you have a lot of arrows 
make sure that the interviewer understands how data flow will work exactly. Tip number five, don't stick to very specific products. For example, don't say if you're interviewing for Google, for instance, don't say that uh, I will put here Amazon's SQS as my main queue and there will be SNS which is going to be notifying all clients that are interested in a specific message. It would be much better if you just stick to services. For example, you would say I would have a queue here and I would have notification service here. If the interviewer wants to know whether you really had experience with something like this, he would jump and ask you, could you give me an example of what type of queues you've used before? And this is the point where you can mention, I've used, for example, 0MQ or RabbitMQ or even MySQL database as a queue or Amazon's SQS and so on and so forth. So make sure that you don't just stick to very specific products that might be very irrelevant to the company that you're interviewing for and rather mention your understanding that there is a queue service, there is a notification service, there is a load balancer and so on and so forth. Tip number six, do not jump into tiny, tiny, tiny details. An example to that is sometimes when I'm conducting an interview, the candidate starts saying, I'll be designing this, uh, let's say, chat service and I will have a backend. This backend will have a database. Database will have the messages table. The first column in the table is going to be the ID. It's going to be a big int of size 11. And the second field is going to be the title. It's going to be a varchar of uh, whatever, 50 characters. And then they will have another field, which is going to be a text. It's going to be uh, limited to 2,000 characters and so on. Th these are too many details. This is like too much. Don't jump into these specifics unless the interviewer asks you, like, could you give me the design or like the rough design of how one of the tables in your database would look like? Or if the interviewer asks, could you give me an idea about the payload that would be transmitted within this specific message and so on and so forth. So these details do not help a lot. Yeah, the, it might give a good idea about how your understanding of different types of database but it would divert your interview into specifics rather than whole system design and would be very confusing to the interviewer sometimes like you're designing whole system and then you're going down to the type of the column that you'd be saving in the database which represents maybe one percent only of your whole system design so don't jump into too many details unless the interviewer asks you for that tip number seven if you remember at the beginning, we mentioned that at the beginning of the interview, you should ask about the requirements and write them down. What's really important and would give a very good understanding about how you're progressing during your system design is to put some checks. So every time you complete one of the features or you're done with one of the requirements, just put a check and make it very obvious to the interviewer that you understand where you are and that you are progressing. So the interviewer can, can at any point look at the requirements that you've written at the beginning and would see that you have done of your, or you've put three or four checks out of let's say 10. So you understand that you're at 30 or 40% of your system design or at least like that progressing because maybe one of them would take more time than the other. So it's really important to have the scope and keep covering saying I cover this part, this part, this part, this part and so on and so forth. Tip number eight, in system design, you should consider the traffic and how many users will be consuming whatever you're designing. So for example, if you're designing a service that would be consumed by 100 million users and you will understand this 100 million or this info will come from the interviewer. So this would be one of the important questions that you would ask at the beginning. How many users would be using my service that I will be designing? or what would be the distribution of these users? Are they gonna be all around the world or am I gonna be specifically designing a service to operate, let's say, in China, where you have a lot of users would be consuming it almost at the same time. So for example, if you're designing a system that would be consumed by 100 million users only in China, then your assumption should be that maybe 70 or 80 million users will be accessing it at the same time, which is very different than if your system would be used by 100 million users 
distributed all around the world because they are not at the same time zone. At some point, some of them would be sleeping, others would be consuming your service and so on and so forth. So a good assumption is always use the value between 50 to 70% of your active users would be available and consuming your service at any given time. If they are distributed all around the world, then just say that maybe I will assume that we have two or three time zones or two or three peak hours where our users will be distributed. This would split them into three, just for instance. And within each time zone, I will assume that 60 to 70% of the users would be consuming a service at the same time. So this would like narrow down to the number that you would like to have. And then later, maybe the interviewer will tell you how many servers to serve this number of users and so on. So Tip number nine, oftentimes a lot of candidates fall into this one. So you're doing a system design for a back-end engineer and he only talks about back-end. He doesn't even mention that there will be clients consuming your service and doesn't even think about how these clients operate. Oftentimes they don't even know a lot of, let's say, back-end engineers don't have any idea about how mobile clients work or the other way around, mobile engineers and they have no idea how back-end services will be designed. I'll give you a specific example. Let's assume that you are designing a service that would provide mobile clients with a feed of messages. A wrong design would be to supply these clients with just a feed of IDs, and then the client would have to exchange each ID with more detailed posts or message. So imagine that you are displaying 10 messages. The first request would be getting 10 IDs and then 10 more requests to get more details about each one of them. And even worse, sometimes I see that people design just one extra endpoint to get number of comments, one API to get number of likes. So imagine that 10 times 10 requests just to get 10 messages and then one extra request for each message to get number of likes, one extra request to get number of comments. Definitely this is not a mobile friendly API design. So just be aware of other clients. My recommendation is to watch more videos about system design specifics for mobile, system design specifics for backend and so on and so forth. And what would be really useful is to read about the API best practices, which is like usually the communication point between any two systems, which is the API. Tip number 10. It's really, really, really important to ask questions at the beginning of the interview. And it's equally important that you drive the interview. You don't just keep asking questions all the time. Oftentimes I go into one of these interviews and the candidate starts asking, what should I do exactly at the beginning? And I tell him all the requirements. And then he designs the first part, for example, designs um, the gateway and the load balancer, and then starts asking, should we have uh, more load balancers or is this one enough? Then I, my answer is usually, what do you think? So I'm asking him the question again, and then he suggests something, and then goes to the next step, tells me, here I will have a database, and asks again, what kind of database engine should I use? Should I use MySQL, or should I use something like NoSQL, MongoDB, or Cassandra, for example, and so on? And then I ask him again, what do you think is the best for the task? And then he comes up with a suggestion and proceeds for. So it would be really important that you don't keep asking, but rather, you drive the interview and you keep telling the interviewer, here I will do this and this and this and that. And be sure that if the interviewer doesn't agree with what you're saying or would like to challenge something that you've said, he will stop you and tell you, oh, wait, do you think that this one will work? Do you think that we will not have a problem here? Or could you give me more details about how you will be utilizing these parts? And so on and so forth. So again, drive the interview. Don't ask too many questions in between. Only ask at the beginning. So these were my tips for you for the system design interview. I hope that you found them useful. If you think that I missed something, then please use the comment below and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much and see you in another video.